You're a puny young chap. Clark, are you? Outfitter. These two pretend to be dressmakers. They are dressmakers. Will they hold to it? Does they go out to work in a factory? I won't have my girl spoken about, not by nobody, young or old. <coughs> oh, that sherry's rising. <laughs> Must be grosser stuff, I reckon. Lord, I should have been back at the shop three days ago. There'd be no end of a row. You are a one. You'll get the chuck. So what if I do? I'll die. I don't believe you care a bit. <laughs> I am the resurrection and the life, saith the Lord. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. We therefore commit the body of William Polly to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, and dust to dust in the sure and certain hope of the resurrection of eternal life. Amen. Insurance? 350 pounds, including his savings. All yours. So I'm rich. Well, not rich, exactly. But it's a tidy sum. There's no end of things you could do with 350 pounds. There's building societies for one thing. Well, I'm no sort of finance here. Well, then you might do worse than put it into a small shop. For a man who sticks to it, there's a lot to be done in a shop. I'll give it some thought. Weigh up me options. There's a gentleman's outfitters down the way. Might be just a thing. Very nice situation. Outfitters. Stick with what you know. That's my motto. After all, you can't stay on holiday forever. Shall I inquire about the lease? All in good time, old man. All in good time. <laughs> Cousin Alfred! Exploratious menanderings. Oh, I thought I'd look you up. You rode a bicycle. Hmm? How bright it is. Uh, it's plated. Plated. Fancy. Here's my cleaning up day. I'm not a bit tidy, but I do like to have a go at things now and then. They leave everything if I let them. I am glad to see you again. I couldn't keep away. I had to come and see my pretty cousins again. You do say things. I won't say which of them. You better come in. <clears throat> what will Ma think us standing out here talking on the doorstep? She'll get ideas. <laughs> oh, 
am, who am I going to sit next to? Oh, well, uh, oh, oh. All of you. Sponge cake, Elvira. Would you oh. like a sandwich? Uh, a cup of tea. Thank you, Annie. We are glad to see you again, Alfred. Oh, well, it's good to be here. It was a lovely funeral. I can't remember the last time I enjoyed myself so much. And some rings, Annie. Oh, they ain't real. Got them out of the prize packet. Uh, prize packet in trousers, I shouldn't wonder. <laughs> I'm sure I don't know what you mean. It means, have you got an admirer, Annie? I don't have no admirer. <laughs> well, some people have been remiss about their chances. They haven't had any chances. I don't believe in making myself too free with people. Not like some I could mention. Oh, dear, have a bit of sugar, is that all? Oh! oh. oh. <laughs> 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 Alfred, let me give you your jacket. Here you go. Hat off. Didn't he? Oh. Lie down all the way. Come and see us again soon, won't you, Alfred? Bye. 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 Bye, Bye Way. Apologies if I'm intradacious. I thought you might be a teacher. The wood is out of bounds, you see. In term time, anyway. But it is the holidays. Well, come down then. Holidays are different. I think I'll stay on the wall. So long as some of me's in bounds. I was just sitting here in melancholic retrospectaciousness. You talk in a most peculiar way. It's sweet. Shouldn't you be at work? Holidays. I might go back to work next month. I might leave it until next year. Gosh. You must be rich. Worth hundreds. My parents have got thousands. They own India. Well, most of it. You make me feel like one of those chivalrous old knights that rode around looking for dragons and beautiful maidens. Why? Beautiful maiden. Up there in your tower. And here I am, 